Hey, everyone likes free stuff, except maybe the devil. Now, I don't know, I ain't never talked to the man. Today, Dylan John Dunn come up with 10 free plugins that you can use in your own videos. And before we cut out this fluff, I know y'all fixing to know what I got going on here. This is a sparkling protein drink that frankly, I'm only showing you because I need to show some of these other plugins in action. I could care less about this brand. To be honest, it kind of tastes like donkey sweat. Every time I've done a free plugins video, I've done a unique intro, so I thought it would carry on the tradition. Let me know how you liked that. The first one for you is technically not a plugin, it's a free app, but it is one you're for sure gonna wanna download before you start downloading the list that we're gonna go over because it just makes installing Funko Pro plugins a breeze and it has a nice little bonus perk that is very useful. It is a plugin from my buddy Dylan Bates called FCB's Plugin Installer. Dylan amazes me. He creates this incredible app that has a very cool looking logo. I do wish this was his face so that we can just drag all of these plugins to his face, maybe with his mouth opening as he's eating the plugins. <laughs> but uh, I digress. All you're gonna do is take the downloaded plugin zip folder, zip files that you have, you drag them directly to this clean, neat window, and bada bing, bada boom, it shows you all the templates, all the plugin templates that you're about to install, and then you just click install, and just like that, you install those plugins into Final Cut Pro. But wait, there's more. Dylan has also added this handy little button up here that allows you to clean your FCP preferences with the click of a button. And if you don't know what this does, cleaning your preferences is a common way to resolve crazy FCP behavior, crashes, unexpected glitches. It's a common troubleshooting step to restore stable performance for Final Cut. But when you do this, it often deletes your different settings that you set up. Like if you had background rendering turned off, if you change it so your color wheels pop up instead of your color board when you press Command 6. So the beautiful Dylan added a feature that allows you to keep your preferences while still using this troubleshooting hack to fix any issues. So big ups to Big Dill. The next one on the list are some really cool titles from a creator named Corentin Abolin. And I know I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of your name. If you're watching this, I apologize. So we have this old trailer here that I made for Motion VFX. We have the three titles from Corentin. This one kind of gives this cool iPhone look, this iPhone Pro look that has a nice glow to it. And it's pretty easy to adjust as well. Very simple parameters. You can just hop in and type what you want. So I'll just say subscribe because I am shameless. And then little bonus trick, if you wanted to use the new magnetic mask, you could toss this on top of the title. You would just head to the add magnetic mask. You'd make a selection of the person and I'm just gonna make this real quick and then you would just hit analyze. And now you have this really simple title here that has a nice glow to it and it's behind your subject. So just an idea of how you can use these titles. I like this one because it has a nice glow. There's also this mask title, which very brilliantly blends with your shot. And the last one is this glow time title, which has this nice animation in and out to show the glowing effect taking action. The letters have a nice glow to them and you can even hop in and change the color of each just by double clicking this parameter here and then you could even make it a uniform color if you'd like. In the 11.1 update for Final Cut Pro, we got adjustment layers built into this software, but Dylan's Adjustment Plus plugin does a lot more than the native adjustment layers. If you don't know what adjustment layers do, basically anything you put onto this layer like an effect or any adjustment that you make to different parameters like say scaling in, will adjust everything underneath. So for this adjustment layer, I used it as a sort of Ken Burns effect. So you'll see it's slowly pulling out. All I did was set keyframes at the beginning of the adjustment layer, go to the end of the adjustment layer, adjust the scale, and now we have this nice zoom out. But Dylan's plugin does a lot more. You can transform from log to rec 709. You can hop in and add a creative LUT, which I'll just add one of my filmic LUTs and then just dial back the look a bit. You can adjust the saturation, you can adjust the contrast, the brightness. You can hop in and add some sharpening and this is useful because it's better than Final Cut Pro's sharpening by a mile, mainly because you can adjust the threshold here so it determines what parts of your shot are sharpened. You can even add some blur or have this entire layer be a blur. You can also add some noise if you want. 
You can use the adjustment layer to add a letterbox. And something that's very useful is this horizon guide. So this allows you to place this circle wherever you want on your shot. And the reason why I think this is so useful is because this allows you to line up things. So in a previous video of mine, I showed the importance of eye trace in your films or videos. You can use this to line up your subject. So from shot one to shot two, that subject is in the same exact spot. The fourth plugin is a pretty dang useful one, especially for me, since I like to show a lot of before and afters for my color grading masterclass and my color grading tutorials on this channel. And it's called Before and After Free from Leno FX. So once you've downloaded the plugin, you can find it in your effects browser, and it's as simple as just dragging it onto your clip, and there's only a few adjustments you can make to it, which makes things really simple. You have the animation duration, so 12 frames is gonna be a really quick adjustment, and then you have four seconds, which is gonna be the longest adjustment. It's a nice slow before and after. And if you wanted to add a hard line, you can turn this on, maybe adjust to the color that you'd like. You can adjust your line width, and now you have a nice before and after with a clean line down the middle. Number five is one that I've mentioned many times, but a lot of you aren't subscribed to this Final Cut Pro channel, so you may have not heard about it or you may have missed it. It is called Tap 5A by Tapio Haja. He also has two other free plugins that also are very useful, and I usually don't mention them because I don't use them that much. I usually use the quick in and out animator the most, and all you do is drag it to that logo or whatever picture or whatever you wanna have pop up and animate in, and it'll do so easily. And you have a bunch of different settings that you can change to. Some of my favorites are zoom from in. I also like fly from pretty much all these directions I use. I use this for the GIFs in my videos. So if I wanted this to fly from the top, it then is gonna fly from the very top of the frame. And then the other parameters you can adjust are the in time. So you swing this to the right, it's gonna be a slower animation. And if you wanted to add some extra motion blur while it's moving, you can adjust the motion blur parameter. So extremely useful and very handy. Now something to note, because I've got this many times when I've mentioned this plugin, if you have an issue like this, where it's not coming from the top of the frame, it's not the plugin that's broken. If I hit the transform tool here, you'll see that this is the frame that it's coming down from. So the solution to this, let me quickly delete this because the effect has to be done on top of the compound clip, is pressing option G and throwing that picture or logo or whatever you're wanting to animate in, into a compound clip. So now if we press the transform tool, you'll see that the border is the entire frame. So then if you drag these on and you do fry, fly from top and we change this to fly to bottom, we add some motion blur. Now we have some nice animation from the top of the frame to the bottom. And uh, the reason this is going behind the chair is because I use the magnetic mask to cut myself out here. And if you wanted to add the same thing to this lime photo, you can simply just drag this to the photo of the lime on your timeline. And now you have everything animating in and animating out, although this one would have to end here for it to animate out with the lemon. Up next, we have another one from Corentin Abolin, and these are some really useful transitions that have a colorful cinematic vibe to them. Corentin has a lot of other free transitions on his website, so make sure you check those out, but I downloaded the ones that have a similar vibe to them, and that is this kind of cinematic grunge look. So once you download them, you can find them in your transitions browser and they create this cool effect that you can customize as well. And not just the saturation and adjusting the color of things, but something I would recommend adjusting is the blend mode. They're set to difference. And if you don't know what difference does, as a very basic explanation, it takes your image and makes it almost like a very ghostly thermal imaging type look. So if you adjust this to something else, maybe like soft light, you then have this um, more kind of blending in look that is not so in your face. So even changing it to like multiply will create a cool look. This will then cut out all the white parts of the transition and leave only the black. You can even adjust it to screen or overlay and that's gonna give a different look as well. So lots of options here. It's surprising that these are free. Just hop in and adjust the blend mode and the different settings to get a look that you vibe with. 
The seventh one is from my South African buddy, Brad West. How was that, Brad? Was that pretty good? <laughs> I think it was uh, maybe a two out of 10. So once you download Brad's Glint plugin, you can find it in your effects browser and it lets you adjust the exposure. You can change the tint of the glow. So if I wanted it to be more yellow, you can adjust the glint size. So lots of options here. And this would be most useful if you're wanting to add kind of a little extra pizzazz to different logos and different things that you have popping up in your shot. So for example, with this Fanica Pro logo that I added, if we add this glint effect, you'll see it has this nice cool glow. And it doesn't have to be as exaggerated as what we did with this lemon shot. Could just be something like this where you throw it on and adjust the exposure and that looks infinitely better as a logo than just that, than your normal Fonica Pro logo. So lots of options here for you to make things that should normally look kind of boring when they're in your videos and look like you took a lot of time to add that extra oomph. When in reality, all you did was hop into that effects browser and drag Brad's Glint plugin to that picture. Number eight is another really useful one from Leno LenoFX, and it is a free picture-in-picture -picture effect. You can find it in your titles. So this is useful if you want to drag it over top of your footage and you don't mind using the drop zone. So you would just select the drop zone. You would select that video or picture that you want. So typically you wouldn't have something like this on your timeline. You would have to hop in and then hit apply clip and then you would go into onto your on-screen controls and adjust the position of this. Now you have this nice intro and outro. Obviously, that's way, way too short, but you get the point. Very easy to use, simple. You can adjust things like the color of the line. So if you wanted it to, say, match your shirt, you can adjust the roundness, you can turn off the arrows that show up, you can increase the distance of the drop shadow behind it. So that's the first way to add this plugin, but the way I much prefer is by hopping into your effects browser, going down to Leno Effects Picture in Picture Free, and then selecting whichever one you want. So if we do that same one, you simply just drag it on to the footage that's on the timeline. I just find this is an easier way to go about creating the picture-in-picture -picture effect. Once again, we're bringing it big to my South African buddy. Oh, that's New Zealand. <laughs> that's a, I'm a Kiwi now. It's Brad West's free whip pan transitions. So Brad's free transition pack comes with six different transitions. You have a whip down transition, whip pan left, whip pan right, a whip pan up. You have a zoom in and a zoom out, which I used in this part of the video. You have this nice zoom out. And these transitions are a part of Brad's bigger pack, which has way, way more presets in it, as well as some presets that have motion blur added on to them. So very useful pack, both the free one and the paid. The 10th plugin, before we move on to the bonus, are these 10 simple titles from Leno LenoFX. So you can find these 10 simple titles in your titles browser, obviously, and most of them add a background blur as well as darkening. So if you didn't want to have that come up, you just wanted the title, you could just turn off the background overlay. You can adjust the size and position by using your on-screen controls, and then you can hop in and adjust things like the color that shows up. So now we'll have this little green wipe there to show the title. I like how simple they are and how the animation looks professional. A lot of free titles look like trash, but the ones in this video I picked specifically because they look good. I wanted to include a cool bonus for you guys as well. So I took 10 of the professional sound effects from my Filmic Crisp sound effects collection, which is a pack of over 328 awesome sound effects for content creation. And I put them into a pack of 10 sounds that you can download on my website. But I am gonna ask you to do a favor for me though, because it would mean a lot to me and it would help me to keep creating free content like this every week. And that is to subscribe to this channel. It's hard out here for a Fonica Pro YouTube and I would greatly appreciate the support. If you want to see 10 useful Fonica Pro tips, give this video a watch and have a great rest of your day.